I'm in Cheddar, a small little town in Somerset. For most people, this would be a lovely place to settle down for a couple of weeks. However, for me, a couple of years ago, this was nothing but a nerve-wracking hell. <laughs> My name is Tyler Wilson. To say my reality was normal would be wrong. However, from August 2015, my reality has been haunted by nightmares which I cannot describe. For example, I once believed I was in a coma and therefore trapped inside my body, resulting in me considering stupid things. It has changed my whole perception of reality and how surreal it really is. When I came out of this, I wanted to recreate some of the stories I'd heard in peer support. So my name's Bradley Jones, um, I had a psychotic episode around seven years ago, I'd say. I'm Erin and I've had psychosis for about a year and a half. Do you mind um, just telling me what your experiences have been like? Yeah, um, so I'm 26 now and suffered from a psychotic episode when I was around 19. It was a really sudden thing for me, so I came back from a party. Literally, I opened the door of my parents' house where I was living at the time. No. You stay away from my son! Give me it, bitch! Give me it, I don't have it! You need it! Where is it? You're not gonna get the prowl through my shit anymore! You're not gonna steal from me no more! Basically, I heard my parents arguing about money and arguing about all these different things, like really aggressively late at night, so I spent ages kind of just listening to them in my bedroom. They start talking about heroin and this like heroin deal, and my parents aren't heroin dealers and uh, nothing like that at all, but you know, obviously I was hearing them argue about that, so I um, obviously started believing it because that's what I was hearing. start hearing voices as well of um, my friends and believe that they're in the loft kind of above my bedroom. It's safe now. You can leave. Which led to me doing some quite like bizarre things like trying to basically break them out of the loft without my parents realising and obviously they weren't actually in there. Um, so obviously fairly quickly my parents realised that I was doing some unusual things like you know tapping on the ceiling kind of nicking their car keys and burying them in the front garden so my friends could escape and kind of get away. So they took me to the GP after um, a couple of days who referred me to the early intervention in psychosis service. Um, and from then on, kind of nurses started seeing me at home, but I started developing this belief that I didn't have mental health issues, but I was in this kind of TV show. <laughs> Quite often people try to kind of argue with me about some of the things I was really worried about, um, you know, that people could hear my thoughts or that, um, you know, people were kind of spying on me through kind of sick cameras all over the house, which kind of makes sense, you know, they wanted to reassure me when I was really distressed, but what I found when people kind of really argued with me and really tried to convince me something wasn't happening because I was so paranoid, I just became convinced that they were in on it. <laughs> Still having a lot of experiences, so still hearing voices. Having visual hallucinations. Really couldn't accept that this was a kind of mental health experience. So for me it happened pretty slowly, really gradually. My first symptoms were kind of feeling like I had some depersonalisation going on, so everything seemed really fake, 
it was like being in a video game and I I went back to wearing glasses, I went to the opticians and it wasn't my eyesight so I thought okay this is a bit odd. And after that, my mood started going downhill quite a bit and I decided to go and see a therapist. Hello Erin, so you've been experiencing some perceptual problems? Yes, I... Clearly causing you some distress. I don't know. Are you sure, sure it's not your, your eyesight? eyesight? No, I checked. No, I don't doubt that. Look, I'm seeing this thing find rain all the time, and I feel it's controlling my mood. Well, the rain does affect people's mood. You're very imaginative. Uh, I would say you have an overactive imagination. Okay, uh, I'm gonna give you some exercises to do to help you relax. Who basically just told me I had an overreactive imagination, <laughs> which wasn't great. Um, so that put me off seeing anyone, but eventually my mum said, you know, why don't you try seeing an actual psychologist? And I did. And she said that it would be best to go to the GP, try and get a referral to CAMS. And I did. I started seeing a private psychologist while I was waiting for it um, and things started getting a bit worse here. I started having mood swings, hallucinations. this really crazy idea that the world was going to end in the autumn and this was probably around the spring so it lasted a really long time and I thought that I needed to somehow save the world um, a bit like Donnie Darko. I don't know whether it was jump off a building and somehow sacrifice myself. And I was really, really excited about it. I'd see clues in the clouds. I'd find clues in music and I thought that something, some bigger force was telling me that I needed to pick up on these clues and they were gonna tell me when I needed to kind of kill myself, sacrifice myself. And how do you think you managed to come out of your episode? One, um, was really learning to manage stress. Yeah. Um, I don't think before I kind of had my episode, I didn't really do anything that was a kind of positive coping strategy in terms of kind of managing stress. Um, so everything I did kind of just created more stress. I didn't really talk to anyone about kind of any of my emotions or how I was feeling. The antipsychotics were a big thing. Um, I couldn't have done it without my parents and my family. That was really, really important for me. Um, I think because my delusion was around a specific time of year, once we got past October and nothing had happened, I'd kind of realised that I'd got it a bit wrong. Mm started at EI, Early Intervention Team, and it's been good from there really, just, yeah, got better, recovered. I remember it so visually, it's fun and horrible and weird and not that, it's not even bad, it's kind of just interesting, like, this is three years ago when you show someone looking around a scene and then they see flashbacks and stuff like that, it's exactly like that at the moment. 
they actually capture it pretty well in films. Because it's called Surreal Reality, I've got a final question which is going to confuse. Probably be very hard to answer, but what do you believe reality is? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I wasn't expecting that. What reality is? Um, I suppose... I don't know, that's a very deep philosophical <laughs> question. I remember coming out of this shop, I suddenly screamed in front of a poor old lady because I felt like knives had just entered my hands. I think reality does exist in everyone's minds and what psychosis really taught me is how subjective reality is. I remember walking down here absolutely desperate for the toilets, uh, but I was so unsure whether I was going to enter the wrong place or felt like I was going to do something stupid. So I kind of just stood here and stared for about five minutes and then um, I walked away again. <laughs> That's a really difficult question. I guess it's the general perceived thing. Walked past this van. I, my friend decided that it was a great time to tell me that he'd become vegetarian. And of course, from that moment on, I was certain that I wasn't in reality. It's, it is all about perception, but I guess a lot of people can perceive things in a similar vein. Um, and that's probably what their idea of reality is. But for other people that have experienced anything out of the norm, whether it's hallucinations um, or delusions, then your sense of reality just shifts a lot. So all of this was because here, the night before, I had taken a weed brownie. This was a mistake which made me psychotic. And I wanted it to be over after the first night. Yet here I am, th almost three years later, still talking about it. For ages, I wanted to erase it from my memory. I no longer think that, though. Because even though it was and still is traumatic for me, it has made me what I am today. And why would I want to change that? So I asked the question, what is reality? And that's because for years, it felt so important to me. I no longer think that though. The sun doesn't shine on this side Trapped in the depths of my mind Both sides of the spectrum Learning my lessons whilst I keep on venting like I'm bipolar with a hint of psycho And these dark clouds follow me where I go Stuck in the midst of it Sometimes I fail to quit And just give up on everything that I've done Then I hear a word from the Holy One He says keep pushing, you won't need for nothing Keep your eyes peeled cause fake people bluffing Be a watchman and see Jesus coming Cause we're really in these end times Speak your peace cause I've said mine I can't hold it in but you begs mine I stay close to sin still can't get my soul Then I'm like let mine go 